what is going on guys we are back for another episode of pokemon top fives uh we are back with the ice typing uh obviously a traditionally most people think it's a pretty frail typing but it's actually surprisingly bulky um obviously it has a lot of weaknesses a lot of things that can hit it pretty hard not very many things that can hit it hard back so it does struggle a little bit but it is a very very useful and unique typing uh i'm super excited for this list uh my list is actually fairly cohesive um, a lot of the lists, you know, they're just my favorite top fives uh, based on types, you know, based on, you know, um, design or competitively. This list is actually pretty cohesive. If I wanted to make an ice type gym, I could make a team with this and it'd be pretty decent. So I'm pretty excited for this list. But of course, as always, guys, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe, uh, you know, in the comment section down below. Let me know what your top five is. Uh, of course, we don't include uh, ice or we don't include legendary typings uh or legendary typings legendary pokemon on this list uh because i do plan on doing one in the future and of course we only really use primary typings so um yeah i mean if your list includes it by all means put it in there i i absolutely want to see them so uh without further ado let us hop in to number five All right, so at number five, we have Frostlass, the land snow Pokemon. Uh, this is based off of a kimono girl uh, from Japanese traditions. Uh, so what she basically does um, is she just eats the souls of uh, hiker men uh, that come up in the icy mountains, which is absolutely wild. I, and I find that so many ghost types have such crazy backstories in Pokemon. But uh, this Pokemon is super, super versatile. Um, it's not really going to be your offensive threat. It's really going to be something that uh, allows your other Pokemon to thrive. So, uh, you know, you got Spikes, you got Will-O-Wisp, you got your traditional ghosty stuff, right? Your Hexes, your, your Will-O-Wisp, your Destiny Bonds. Like, it's going to try to make your opponent's uh, life a living nightmare. But it does have some decent offensive moves, right? I mean, like, it gets Shadow Ball, Blizzard. Um, you know, Icy Wind's going to slow down your opponent. So... Um, competitively, this thing is nothing to write home about, but the backstory, the lore behind this Pokemon is actually super sick. And I just have a ton of respect for it just because of Generation 3 Elite 4. Um, the Ice person, I forget her name at the moment, but she has two Frost Lasses and it's just a menace to deal with. So, um, you know, I had to put it on the list, it's partly nostalgic, partly just respect for it. But uh, without further ado, let us get in to number four. And going back to my Gen 3 nostalgia, we have Walrein, the uh, Ice Break Pokemon. Now, uh, Walrein is obviously super, super bulky, super, super thick. But the reality of it is that when Generation 3 came out, it was a thick, it was a thick boy. But now it's not really as defensive as you would think. Uh, 110 HP, great. Uh, and 90 in both defenses are still pretty solid. Like you can do a lot with it, but it doesn't really have the offenses to kind of match the bulky offense that it really wants to be that it really what it wants to be and that's what keeps it down in the competitive tiers um once you get into competitive pokemon but um when you do want to get in competitive pokemon i mean sword stance waterfall ice school spirit earthquake i mean those are all pretty solid moves um the only thing is it's 65 speed like you're you're not you're a little too fast for trick room a little too slow um, outside of Trick Room, and so that's kind of what holds it back. Um, and obviously, but back in the day, man, like, man, Surf, Ice Beam, Super Fang. Those were basically your original movesets for this. Super Fang obviously immediately halves your opponent's uh, HP, and then Surf and Ice Beam were strong enough moves back in Gen 3, Gen 4 that it did a lot of damage it did a lot of work and obviously thick fat gave it a little bit more resistances than it used to than it traditionally would have so uh but wall rain obviously super nostalgic for me had to be on the list um but yeah let's move on to number three all right so moving on to the more terrifying of the ice types we have Bear Tick. Now, Bear Tick is actually designed to be a weather-abusing Pokemon. 
Um, it has both Slush Rush and Swift Swim. So you can run on a Hail Team. You can run it on a on a Rain Team. It's going to be effective in both situations. Um, 130 attack, uh, 95 HP, decent defenses, uh, just kind of slow at base 50 speed. So even with Slush Rush and Swift Swim, it's still pretty slow. And so despite those two really good abilities that give it a little bit of usage you're almost better off in a trick room setting and not using this move pool which is super super weird to think about but um obviously this thing's a monster like icicle spear icicle crash um you know it's gonna do a lot of damage superpower low kick are your kind of your fighting type coverage and then you have liquidation and aqua jet as really good water coverage moves so that way there you get your you get your water stab uh, well, not stab, but water boosted moves in the rain. Uh, you get your ice type moves, which are stab boosted by hail. Uh, superpower, you know, throw chop, stone edge, play rough. This thing gets swords dance and bulk up. It can do a lot of work. It's just that it's really, really hard. Uh, with the amount of weaknesses that just pure ice type have, there's a lot of barriers, especially when it's not the fastest Pokemon. Um, but obviously bears are the king of the north man like you know it, it was hard not to put it you know it was hard not to put this higher on the list just because of design and just what it is in the animal kingdom but competitively obviously it's it's not the greatest it has a niche but you kind of have to build the team knowing that you want to use it instead of just something that could fit on a team and be really really powerful obviously in a let's play it's it's super sick it's super fun to use um but let us move on to number two. And at number two, we have one of my favorite Pokemon. We have Alolan Ninetales. Uh, Ninetales being probably my second favorite. Uh, this is the uh, Alolan version of that. And they just made this thing. And like, they went from Sun Abuser to Hail Abuser. And this thing is an absolute monster. Snow Warning is the Pokemon on this top five that sets the hail when you come in. And this uh, Pokemon is also the first Pokemon to get a Roar Veil, which is a light screen and reflect in the same move. Uh, and so you get a really, really nice lead Pokemon with the Lola Ninetales. And then you can kind of freeze dry or blizzard your opponent. Uh, maybe even Icy Wind if you're trying to set up your one of your other Pokemon. Um, and then it has Pain Split as a way to re actually get somewhat reliable recovery now, um, which was kind of what was lacking for it in the past. But Alone the Ninetales design-wise for me is really why it's on this top five, and especially where it's placed. Um, obviously, competitively, it's done it quite well for itself. Uh, Fairy really does help that propel this typing into a little bit better uh, category, but I mean. I mean, if you guys have ever seen my tattoos and stuff, like I have wolves and foxes uh, tattooed all over me. So, um, you know, I, I had no choice. This Pokemon was on my list. It's actually Megan's second favorite Pokemon and arguably in my top, arguably my top five, uh, definitely my top 10. So, um, and also the fact that this poke, like the lore behind Ninetales and Alone with Ninetales is absolutely wild to me. Um, if you ever want to read something, go check it out. Um, they're basically considered deities of the uh, Alolan region for Alolan Ninetales. I thought it was a deity protecting the protecting the mountains, um, and then of course, obviously Ninetales being a Kitsune. So um, it has elements of both of them. It's super super dope. But we got to get onto number one because I don't want this to take forever. So let's, without further ado, number one. All right, so at number one, we have Mamoswine. We have Manny himself, uh, the Twin Tusk Pokemon, the Mammoth, the Behemoth, uh, the Ice Age Pokemon. This thing is had to be number one. Had to be number one. It's probably in my top five Pokemon. It, pretty sure in a later top five, I actually have it in my top five. So that's a little bit of a spoiler alert. But um, obviously, 110 attack, 130 physical uh, sorry 130 physical attack 110 hp this thing is an absolute truck truck 
Um, competitively, it's always had the niche that basically what Beartig wants to do, but it's 30 speed faster. And that just changes so much dynamics with it. Um, and obviously the ground typing helps it as well. Earthquake, Ice Shard, Icicle Spear, Icicle Crash, Knock Off, Stealth Rock, Superpower, you name it. That's all it really needs as a full move pool to be able to crush whatever it needs to do on a team. And so for me, um, I had a ton of love from this thing from uh, Generation 4 when Dawn had one. But, um, you know, for me, a, a Wooly Mammoth is going to be on my top five. There ain't no way around that. So without further ado, guys, uh, thanks for watching this top five. Um, of course, I want to know your top five down below. Um, and uh, I think we're about halfway through the list now, of the top five. So, um, of course, subscribe so you can make sure that you can uh, watch all the other top fives that they come across. Uh, as always, I always leave the playlist as well in the top corner for you to click on so you can miss, so you won't miss out on any other thing. But uh, I'm gonna get up out of here. So, thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.